we didn't have racism problem because we didn't have black people in Russia. Is there a divide in this industry? Hell yes. Do you think uh, my business is not scalable because I'm black? A lot of guys in my situation would probably be a little butt hurt. I don't think I've seen the, uh, eight white guys in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say he called me everything but a black man. I have customers asking me, like, who's going to do the work? They're going to be Mexicans? I'm like, do you have problem with Mexicans? I wouldn't say they're racist people, but I've had people I felt like they didn't trust me or maybe because of the color of my skin. Why would I judge anyone by where he's from? So racism in Indianapolis is still a thing? Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, we deal with it a lot. You know, um. my, my mentor, uh, Rodney Webb, he's a black guy, uh, absolutely love him. He talks a lot about it. He, he's the most successful person I know, like in my circles, you know, he Who makes Rodney Webb. Oh yeah, uh, 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 the uh, university. Yeah, university. Rodney Webb yeah, University. So he used to run, um, you know, got our company, sold mm -hmm. it in Atlanta, super successful. But, but he shares a lot of stories. He teach me a lot of you know business tricks and a lot of business techniques, sales. But he speaks openly about it. When he started, it was much harder. He has to when you are black in Atlanta 20, 30 years ago. You have to do a lot of things right. That's where his system, you know, came all about. And do you feel like uh, white people? Oh, I ask straight have advantage in this business and the reason I ask because yesterday we actually have a call from one of our students uh, Mauricio he is in uh, Washington DC and he told me he asked me a question he said Dimitri do you think uh, it's harder for me because I'm black and I, I have a problem explaining like I'm from Russia when I grew up we didn't have we didn't have racism problem because we didn't have black people in Russia, right? So uh, I've never met, you, you're never gonna probably meet in your life a uh, Russian racist, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> because we, 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 you know, we, we, we look, when we watch Hollywood movies, uh, we're like, oh, you know, uh, uh, they have that movement in 60s or in 1800s or whatever the case, right? So for us as a history, but we never experienced we didn't have a hate on the street. We didn't have the movements or uh, the uh, society was not divided. So for us, it's just like watching a movie. It's a, a reading a book. When I move here and when uh, like now I'm teaching guys how to be successful in the business and my mentor talks about it or my student asks, like, Dimitri, do you think uh, my business is not scalable because I'm black? I tell them, dude, I don't think that's the case. I think people here, like, I I'll speak up for myself. I've never ever been treated as a second grade and I'm an immigrant. Like people always treated me by my work ethics. I mean, I did have some hate every once in a while. Like every time I have a conflict <laughs> with other roofers, it, there's always the comment, well, that's not how we do things in this country. You're Russian, you're whatever, you're communist. So there's gonna be hate, but tell me about advantage or like being black in this industry. All righty, <laughs> you want this juice. Um, now nah, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm biracial, okay? So, I, you know, I've been called niggers by white people and I've been called white boy by black guys, okay? So I'm, I'm in a unique situation. Um, I love who I am though. Is there a divide in this industry? Hell yes, okay? Um, you, are, you gotta be blessed to never have anyone ridicule you because you're from another country. And to hear you say that you never had. It. I mean, I think that's awesome. A lot of guys in my situation would probably be a little butt hurt. Me, um, man, I've, I, been I've been ridiculed, but I, I, I would say like I've never felt like second hand. Let's say this: I've had a shotgun pulled on me by an older white woman in her home, inside of her home, and she called me a monkey <laughs> in front of my workers and everything. So it does exist, you know. Um, I've I got camera, and I, I'll probably show it to you one day. Um, we were on a job last year getting an estimate and the guy, I couldn't believe this, man. It was, it was insane. We pulled up and we see the Trump flag in his house, front of his house waving with American flags. So I said, it's going to be interesting. This is right after Trump. I think he won a couple years ago. And, um, we get up there and this guy, older guy, 75 is like, man, you know, I don't even want to say some of the things he's, he said on this camera, but let's just say he called me everything but a black man. Okay. It does exist in here. I've had a lot of homeowners when I was in my selling days knocking on doors, get the hell off my, get off my property, you nigger. Yeah, it happens. So people, when, 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 
white America acts like, and I don't want to get into a, a, sure, a sure. big race conversation, but I, I appreciate the question and I just want to be honest about it. I think until white America realizes the problem, you got some people like, oh my God, it happened 400 years ago, get over it. But you're not reminded every day through pictures. You're not reminded every day through why certain uh, videos and movies are made and why we have to keep having you know, a book about a, a boat coming from Africa. We're reminded, we're, we're always reminded. So the typical white American, you know, and I'm saying that's looking on this on both sides, not racist, not anything, is, is, has to feel like, listen, even though that we're not where we were 400 years ago, we, we can't keep acting like it hasn't been permanently put in people's heads and why we all react, white and black America, to each other the way we do, you know? So <laughs> until we deal with that issue and we get a leader in the White House that can, that can undivide us, then it's always gonna be a problem. And, and you know, I say that to say this, even when Obama was in office, I, you know, here's our first black president. I honestly don't feel like he took advantage of that situation to help the, div the divide in this country. Can you give so it's a not just Trump? Sure. Can you give a, a advice to maybe black business owner in a roofing in construction industry who doesn't believe that he can scale his business because of that because he doesn't have advantage? Be transparent as possible. That's my best advice to you because you're already going to have people look at you. Listen, I've had homeowners straight up say, "Hey, no, it's crazy. This is the first black crew I've ever seen." Like, I wonder how many white crews were on a job and someone came up and said, oh, my God, I've never seen eight white guys on a job before. So I, I tell guys all the time, just be transparent. I you don't know? think I've seen the, uh, eight white guys on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll man. say it. I feel, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in shock. <laughs> but just be transparent. You know, let your skills speak for itself. One thing I can say for me working is when a customer, all it, all it takes is five minutes to see me on a roof do my thing. You're going to trust me. You just are. So let your skills get you in the door. Don't talk too much and, and just be transparent with your contracts. Because a lot of times I've had people, I wouldn't say they're racist people, but I've had people I felt like they didn't trust me or maybe because of the color of my skin that let me, let me get up on the roof and check. Let me, let me do this. I've had, I've had homeowners literally bring other contractors out to my job while I'm on the roof to inspect my work. Now, how many, how many contractors go through that? So it does exist. I mean, but me, it's never kept me from being successful. Let's say that. Well, it's absolutely love it. I mean, I'm the same way. Like I have customers asking me, it's like, who's going to do the work? They're going to be Mexicans. I'm like, do you have problems with Mexicans yeah, or, or, or Latinos? I get or... that a lot. A so, lot, I mean, so, I'm sure. What do you do when, when they ask you that? I, I don't care. Yeah. So, so who do you want me to hire? You want me to hire white Americans? Like for one, good luck. Right. They almost don't exist. I, I have a couple white crews, but it's just you deal with what you have in the market. Yep. You know, and the, the same thing, we're in Minneapolis. We have, uh, like, I would say 10, 15 years ago, probably 80% of trade workers were, like, uh, in exterior uh, space, like uh, your siding installers, gutter installers, were Russians, Russians or immigrants. And, you know, if people would tell me, like, Misha, I don't want a Russian in my house, what do you want me to do? I, I remember finishing basement. Uh, in Atlanta, it was 2006, 2007. I was the only immigrant in the crew. And I remember this lady told us, Dimitri, when I grew up, my dad was, uh, it was during Cold War. It's like my dad was, if I would not go to sleep at certain time, he's like, if you're not gonna sleep right now, uh, a Russian guy with an AK-47 gonna come in and shoot you. <laughs> like they were scared. And she's like, and the times have changed and now I have this Russian boy laying tile in my basement and they see like you know you hardworking guy it was a awesome, it, it was awesome compliment but if you think about how we've been all brainwashed yeah. and how it's all like getting under you like why would i judge anyone by where he's from and whether he's russian black mexican spanish like work is a work and if you have i mean just like you know don't eat a chinese restaurant if you don't want to be the service exactly. it's it's a small niches dominated by people willing to work in them. Like I know Russian guys, we don't mind, you know, construction work. A lot of Americans mind it or cannot keep up with us, yeah. you know, whether it's like whatever the trade is. And Spanish, they, um, like, like, you know, South Americans, whatever, they dominate the roofing space because they're willing to do the work. They have endurance for it. And a lot of people, let's be honest, they can't compete. Yeah, you're right. And I, I would add this to that, uh, to your question um, as far as uh, 
you know, a young black man in our industry, I would definitely say keep a clean social media. You know, one thing that I've experienced is people check on me a lot more than my other roofing counterparts in my market. I know this for a fact, okay? So, and, but see, my mom raised me like that, so you can go back on my page. I mean, you might see a couple cuss words, but I've always, since social media, I'm blessed, and I try to tell my sons this all the time because they don't understand how things stay forever on the internet. But I've tried consciously to always be positive in my, in, on my social media. So when my customers do look me up, they're like, okay, at least he's a good guy. They give me that. I mean, I hate to have to do that, but in, in this world we live in, sometimes you got to use what you have to, to get work. That's my next question. So you are admin of one of the biggest groups on uh, Facebook, Roofers 101, yeah. uh, 24,000 plus members, but you would not let your son to join that group. Tell me about the culture, roofing culture on the internet, because uh, we have a group, it's over 2,000. We, we love our um, energy, we love respect. We build it from ground yeah. up, we don't let any negativity. Let's talk about culture of roofers online. Why they're so negative? Why there's so much hate? I mean, this is <laughs> and you deal with it very well. One of the best I've seen. What's your strategy and why there's so much negativity? And why would you not let your son to be a part of it? I'll tell you, it's real simple. I love this damn industry so much. I love it that much that I've kept myself in the back seat. You know, because... You know, I have my girl, I've almost lost my family. So like, why are you investing all this money in this school and this training facility? Let's just be successful, we'll come back later. And I just couldn't give up, I couldn't give up. I, I really felt like if I didn't do what I did, we wouldn't have roofers, even though I know we'll get jobs done. But as far as culture in the, in the, in the industry, it sucks. We both know that. We both know that there's a, a stigma of what a roofer think he is. And it's the tough guy, talk shit, be as nasty as you, vulgar as you want to be, and that's, that's not it. And what I'm trying to do, I was brought in, um, I'm, and I'm just a, 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 a moderator on the group. I'm actually not even an admin. I was brought in because I was making positive videos, and the guy said, hey, man, can you start sharing some of that in this group? You know, I said, great. I would love to do it. And then at first, it was like, you know, I, I was getting so much hate, and you, you, you think some of the racist, I mean, I could show you some stuff <laughs> in my inbox that is, <laughs> It'll make the devil sweat a little bit, but I mean, I believe in our industry so much. I believe in the younger generation. So my whole thing, that was my, my recipe. Just, just stay focused. We're going to start getting these younger kids to, to pay attention. And I can show you some of these, especially even since I posted that video last night or the picture of being here, I've had five guys like, oh my God, man, like I wanted to leave that group. It, I don't learn anything. It's just, it makes me not even want to roof, but man, you're giving me hope. That's all we need. We just got to start with one kid and then it'll turn into 10 and it'll turn into a hundred. But as far as culture for the roofing industry, it sucks. And it's going to be a tough, it's going to be tough to get these, these guys that's been in the industry for 15, 20 years. And they think this is what a roofer is about to look at themselves in the mirror and say, you know what? I can be respected as a doctor. People can look at me like I'm a lawyer and respect me, even though I'm on a roof doesn't matter. We risk our lives up there. It's a, we used to be respected like that. You know, when, when I was starting out 20 years ago, God honest truth, the guy that taught me, when I would walk into the bank with him or I would go to stores with him, people would stop and be like, hey, Dave, how you doing, man? I said, you did my roof five years ago, man. You're so but it wasn't about the roofing to me that attracted it. It was the respect that they gave this man that I felt like doctors would get when they walked into a room and people found out that he's a a neurologist or whatever you call them people like they, they give them respect man and that's what we need would you say we can take it back if we start taking ourselves seriously yes yes that's what it's going to take and holding each other accountable which backs to the you know as far as keeping my social media clean you know i i tell guys all the time listen if you're going to be on facebook talking uh drugs and bitches and hoes and like if you're going to be on there expect not to get any work expect uh, yourself to feel like man why why are they don't treat me like this well you're treating yourself like this you know and then you know roofers don't know how to debate with respect they just don't you know they, their way is right and I'm gonna tell you a million different cuss words on why I'm right and why you're not you know and then I, and then I'm gonna talk about your kid and your wife too on top of that it's, just, it's crazy man are you friends with the best damn roofer yeah we're friends um, you know he's he's a at first I'm a god on his truth I wasn't feeling it because it was it was defeating the purpose of what I was trying to do. 
I'm trying to bring kids on here to be a part of this group. But it's like, man, look at this guy with these videos. You know, you got cocaine on the roof, he's drinking beer wires on the roof, using beer for step flashing, cans for step. <laughs> and it's like, these kids see this and they're gonna laugh, but they're not gonna take the industry serious. And it wasn't just until the last few months since the coronavirus happened, where he started posting some really good stuff on his personal page. Then I looked, I went, actually took the time, went back, looked at his, some, his, you know, his uh, content, and I thought it was actually a brilliant thing that he did. You know, sometimes I wonder, did he really know he was going to do that and it was going to turn out like this? But at the end of the day, I think he knows that some of his, his content, if we're going to save this industry, change the culture, I would hope that he knows some of that thing. Some of those things have to change. Yeah. He has to delete his channel so, well, to help I, 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 just I, Well, deleting the channel, <laughs> I, I would say rebranding maybe the channel. You know, your he, BDR. He's working on it now. Yeah, your BDR. So you're always going to be BDR. And don't forget where you come from. But man... Now, and you know what's crazy is this though, maybe in his market, they don't have a short of a roofers. Maybe, maybe <laughs> he can put a, a, a post on Craigslist and get 200 calls and 180 of them are awesome. We don't have that. I'm sure you don't have that, you know? So, so until he realizes that then, and his business is taking a, you know, losing money because then maybe he'll realize that. But I hope, I hope he would know that for the kids watching coming up, that if we're really going to change the culture, like you said, some of the content has to change, man. It just has to. Well, he's a comedian and I absolutely love it. We brought him to this call and when people meet him, they absolutely love him. And if you get to talk to him about actual business sites, you're going to realize that I like how he brings popularity. He's a comedian, which is, you know, love you, BDR. Yeah, Big it's time! The, it's, it's the brand. Like I said, I have no, no personal problems with him. I think, you know, I, I think he does good work or he wouldn't be in business this long, I'll tell you that. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Um, one last uh, advice to brand new roofer. If somebody decides today, I want to go and become a roofer, what advice would you give? The best advice I can give someone is invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, believe in yourself. Don't worry about the contractor. Don't worry about the sub. Don't worry about how many jobs you got coming in. Just worry about yourself. Don't worry about what the guys are making on the crew, what they're talking about during breaks. Just invest in yourself, believe in yourself. Get that gun in the hose and watch what it do for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Yep. Thank you. Love it. If you learned something for your roofing business from this video, we have way more business videos in our roofing business school. Subscribe to the channel, follow us on Roofing Business School, contact if you have any questions.